single day and the reason is that these guys are competing on a global platform sure. on this level as juniors by the time they become senior amateurs they've already had 10 15 fights right then going through the amateur career all this is doing is making sure that the level of the pros we're going to be seeing in two, three, four years is just going to be that much better. Yes, it's going to be fantastic. Remember, over 50 nations, over 370 athletes, but we are now in the finals. Junior lightweight championship of the world. We are scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Let me introduce to you into the blue corner, representing Russia, Rishwan Kamsa. Now into the red corner, representing the Czech Republic, Peter Gabo. And your referee is Mr. Essen Hockenham. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get underway with this junior lightweight bout. Rezwan Kodov in the blue corner from Russia, Peter Gabo from the Czech Republic in the red corner. Last uh, smooth, easy listening sound of our MC for the day. Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what a voice du on that, du man. Double duties, if you will. Got two for Tuesday here. Three three-minute rounds of IMAF action with one minute in between rounds. Three judges at cage side. If we go the distance, we will go to their scorecards. Russia versus Czech Republic. And everything is bigger today. You can see the guys walking out behind that screen that was used for the Brave event last night, walking down the same ramp the bigger pro cage that they're fighting in. Oh, yeah. This is all preparing these guys for turning pro later on in their career. But I can tell you, as amateurs, I love watching these guys fight. My favorite thing to commentate to the amateurs. For sure, we, you've, you've talked about it a couple times this week, and I totally agree. A lot of people like the NBA. I personally like the NCAA. I don't watch the finals. I watch March Madness. And here we are at basically the March Madness of mixed martial arts. Yeah, this is the biggest tournament you're gonna watch anywhere in the world. Last take down there, single leg, but uh, stuffed. Peter has been an absolute beast in this tournament so far. Yeah, great team from Czech Republic. They've got a people, couple people going. So you're just feeling each other out again. The Russian fighter going for that single leg, but yeah, uh, Peter bounces straight back up. The uh, Russian team not afraid of the single leg, I no. will tell you. They, they are doing a fantastic job. And it's that really that joining of IMF and WMMAA that uh, has made this year in particular just the level has increased to another plateau. They're definitely leg men. Yes. We are back to ranging each other out center stage, center cage here in this junior oh. lightweight final. And there you can see the groundwork of the Russian fighters sprawling, grabbing the neck on the way back up. And as they broke up through a couple couple seven ounce oh. gloves at him. Big slam. And we all know the Russians have that grind game. We've spoken about it before. The base that they come into MMA with from school right. level is combat samba or samba and then combat samba. Right. And in my opinion, it's probably the best prep you can have for MMA. For sure. If you don't have the ground game, if you don't have a rustling background, you are bound to drown. And in, in combat samba, remember, striking is allowed. It's not just wrestling. So when they move up to that combat samba level, they're already allowed to strike. They know how to manipulate the body, move that body weight around, and then move their way into MMA. I did actually speak to Jose about this as well. Is the fighters that are now coming through, remember, in the old days of MMA, everyone came from a specific background. Correct. So boxing, Muay Thai, wrestling. Now fighters are at 14, 15, 16, going straight into MMA and doing right. all disciplines. Yeah, it definitely makes it interesting, and it's definitely growing the game and supporting the sport that we so dearly love, mixed martial arts. Oh! A big suplex happens. Love it. And that that's, as much as an intimidating factor, that will suck the wind right out of you when you hit that mat. We've actually seen a couple of fights end with takedowns like oh, that. Oh, yeah. A couple little rabbit punches there as the 10-second clacker goes off. You can see Peter looking to work for a submission there, but uh, the Russian fighter stacking him up and just landing those small little punches. As Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Exactly. Round one in the books here at the IMAF Grand Finals, I'll be saying. It is the, uh, the, the championships, the last day. We've been here all week in the beautiful kingdom of Bahrain. You should go there. 
and what a week it's been. A lot of these guys have been competing already since Monday. So five fights over six days. We had the yes. Brave event last night in the same arena. Yesterday was the only day off that they had. The only one day, day to recover, and then come into finals day to try and take home that gold medal. Well, they've got their cornermen in there, and they are listening to those instructions. Let's see who moves on into round number two and tries to implement their game plan. Remember, if we go the full three rounds, we will go to the judges' scorecards. The clacker sounds seconds out and seconds away from more IMAF action. And the corner, very important. You can see the different styles of the corners, not just the fighters. Oh, Some yeah. corners come in, a lot of energy, try and hype their fighters up. Other, other corners come in very calm, very collected, and the fighter breathes and, and takes off that energy from their corner. Round number two starts up with a good old touch of the gloves, sportsmanship, the cornerstone of combat sports. Nice low kick happened there from Team Russia's own Rezwan Kotov. Level changes and feints happening right now, trying to throw off their opponents. Now Peter needs to work that uppercut and the lateral movement, maybe get some push kicks and up kicks just to make the Russian fighter think about that shot. For sure, big swinging overhand left. Shot and a stuff, and again taps him on the side of the head with those green hill gloves. A standout for me throughout this tournament. I always try and pick one thing that, that I think has, has changed between every year that I've come here. And the takedown defense in this tournament has been incredible. Yeah, lots of growth when it comes to the sprawl. Sprawl and brawl, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of alliteration, alliteration and consonants we'll be trying to use <laughs> today. The rhymes, sprawl and brawl, punches and bunches, and right now, position before submission. There you can see he's got the butterfly hooks in. Peter doesn't want to be on his back too long here. He needs to try and work this position, get himself in and get back to his feet, or at least look for a submission. The longer he stays here, he is losing the round. Well, that's the other interesting thing. I mean, again, the, the three judges at cage side, they, they come from international. We are a global event. They come from anywhere and everywhere. And where do their backgrounds come from? Are they Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys as his guard is open? Or do we have much more striking fans if you will yeah as you say the 55 nations don't just represent the athletes it represents the cut men the referees the right. judges everyone is coming from all over the world and the referee stands them up but it's finals day we want to see action touch your gloves again a lot of respect shown between these two fighters they gotta be again uh they nice spinning kick unlike regional events they they don't know each other you know what i mean so you gotta respect a big slam brings him up against the cage by the way, that, that little drag might have trimmed his hair. He got a free haircut right there. And also, that, that is 100% an intimidation factor. He picked oh, yeah. him up, ran with him, and then slammed him down. That's just to show your opponent, I own you, and I'll take you where I want. Exactly. We need an Uber sponsorship right now. Grab taxi. He just got a free ride. Nice shots, Land. He's, he's in the half guard, but it almost looks like he's in a side control position because he can just work from wherever he wants at the moment. And with your head being pushed up against the cage like that, it's very difficult for you to do anything. I mean, it, it, it's hard for you to try and spin out. Your head's being pressed against the cage, almost being stacked up. You can see he's now worked his way around to try and get out of that position. Yeah, and Peter's got to do something here as he's being quite dominated right now in the second round as the last 10 seconds come into play. The Russian fighter looking to finish strong here. He wants to send a message to the judges. Yeah, staying very, very active at the end of round two. And as I said, you can see some damage on the face of the fighters coming in from those earlier days. So they are fighting over multiple days, a lot of them carrying injuries. And a couple of guys that have won fights haven't actually been able to fight the next day. Yeah, I've been finding it very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm staying with Prem, who is obviously in control of the, the weigh-ins. And you know, they do the medicals in the mornings. So they actually make the guys do uh, knuckle push-ups. They want to be able to see if, if the injuries that they have sustained could actually set them back from work. So again, he was actually talking about how he makes them go on their knuckles instead of just a regular push-up so that you can see the whole action. And guys will come in and be like, no, I'll do a one-arm push-up. I'm, so, I'm so, so strong. So strong I can do one arm. No, you're doing a one-arm because your right elbow is jacked up. You know? And, and fighter, a real fighter will never come in and say, oh, I'm injured, I'm injured, I yeah, can't fight. They, they're going to pull every trick that they know, Absolute especially warriors. here to get into the cage on finals day and for take sure. that gold medal home for their country. 
Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2018 IMAF WMMAA Unified World Champions and Junior World Champions straight up from the Kingdom of Bahrain. Third and final round of action between Russia and the Czech Republic. Russia in blue, Czech Republic in red. And again, fantastic uniforms provided by Green Hill. Yeah, Peter needs to push the action here. He really needs to show the judges that he wants us. He needs to look for the finish. I think he's behind in the scorecards here. Luckily, again, we are not the judges. <laughs> I always we, like we, to take we, a stab at it. Yeah, though. exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty good at predictions up front. Yes. Judging, not really my strong suit. There you right can see the Russian yeah. fighter again trying to get that takedown. Good do, scramble to land on top. I do agree with you that Peter, again, since he's been staying off his back and the busier fighter, Mr. Kotov, has been going body head, body head quite a bit as he listens to his corner right there. And the very, the very knowledgeable uh, fighters, once again, they can be played like a video game. This can be Tekken. Their, their, their corner men right over there can be A, B, A, B, A, B. And he's doing exactly what he says. And I, I, I personally enjoy that growth in knowledge over the past few years of IMAF action. Also, you, you can see when a, a guy's being cornered by someone who's actually his coach. Right. Because a lot of the guys that are coming here are part of a national team. The national team has a coaching staff. But their coaches are not necessarily the coaches right. of those coaching staff. So when you're sitting in a position like this, Ooh. everything's happening around you, and you don't hear the corner because you're not used to the voice. Rezwan going to isolate that arm. I would have loved to have seen him take that over. We've seen a couple crucifixes here in tournament play. And, oh. Going for that choke arm triangle. He's got yeah. it in. Grabbing that bicep. Squeezing it tight. He's let it go. I totally feel you, Jason. Again, right now, Peter has to do something. If, if this goes the distance, uh, I see it only going one way, and that is to Team Russia. He's working his man up against the cage again. Again, very difficult position to do anything from. It's difficult to spin out. You can't really push your legs out. It's a very bad position for Peter at this one, especially with a minute left in this round. He needs to do something. Sure, he looks a little disheartened as he's breathing heavily out of the mouth. The, the mouth guard's a little bit out, and he's receiving some of that seven ounce glove. Again, the man from Russia just staying action packed, changing it up, going down and pulling out the legs to keep him up against the cage, and now again, trading some shots. And you can see he keeps taking the legs and actually putting them underneath him and sitting on the legs, which makes it almost yeah. impossible for Peter to move anyway. Peter may just You know, you know what movie feet. he has? Frustration, <laughs> absolute oh, frustration. Big takedown again. You know, the Russian fighter is definitely showing his dominance here. Knee on belly as the 10 seconds come down to final action here at the end of round three, end of the final round. The Russian fighter, they're showing his corner. I'm number one. Yes. A little bit of red underneath the eye, but he does not look worse for wear as he's got the big grin ear to ear, baby. It's all happening. And my man from Czech Republic still on his back. Frustration again. Very, very disappointed. And, and the problem is, sometimes the guy you're fighting his ground game is just that good. You try everything. You're trying as best as you can. There you can see the Russian fighter. Oh, yeah. Showing his corner. The gold medal is mine, baby. Yes. Coming back to Russia. Remember the IMAF. Again, these are the guys that are putting this sport forward into the sports accord, making it happen, and looking to be in the Olympics. We've been hearing all week, 2028, Los Angeles. That's when it's going to go down. Yeah, they're trying to get it in there as, as an exhibition sport for 2028 and then push to actually make it an official sport in the Olympics after that. And really, it should be there already. I mean, it, was the, it really was one of the first Olympic sports anyway. Pancration, right? We got there. Yeah. We had the marathon. We had the javelin throw, and then we had shots to the face. <laughs> Peace on Earth through combat sports. After three three-minute rounds of IMAF action, we will go to the deliberation of the judges' yes, scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, by your host with the three most. rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the contest. 30 points to 27 points to your winner by unanimous decision and the unified junior lightweight champion of the world. The blue corner from Russia, Rizwan Kamsa!
there you have it, folks. And Russia, well deserved. Yeah, Russia taking home the G. And the Good Russians one. are a standout in this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. your junior. Well, why wouldn't they be? Lightweight Again, world champion, Rezuan Hotov. Rush, but as Oleg Toktarov is over there, the Russian bear. During that third round, I still saw you Man. staring at your corner, taking instruction, listening. This is the biggest team the Russians have ever sent to this tournament. How important have they been in playing a part in this gold medal win? It's all good. We won. Little words, but lots of action. He really hasn't smiled all week. Winner. There's Let's been zero win. smiling on the Russian team, and finally it comes here to here. Fifteen of the finalists are from Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, could that you is an amazing to the podium, stand. please, and to present the medals, please welcome onto the stage, I'm after Rector, Mr. Raymond Phillips. And now, ladies and gentlemen, could you welcome onto the podiums your junior featherweight medalists? 